Hey, what's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another DC Collectibles action figure review on the DC Comics Icons Batman. If you're trying to pick up one of these, you can get a big, 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 big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. I am very excited for this piece. I love six-inch scale, fully articulated figures, and we're getting some again now from DC Collectibles. Uh, before we got our DC Comics figures from Mattel, and those were okay, but they just reused the same body mold. So I'm really, really pumped about this. Cannot wait to open this. On the side, it says 01 DC Icons Batman Last Ride. So on the back, you can see the other figures from the wave. I did get Green Arrow. I might pick up the other two. Then on the side, it says Batman right there. We get the Bat logo over there. And then one thing I wanted to mention, too, I meant to say this in my P.O. Box pickup video, is that JC is hosting a giveaway for $200 store credit to Big Bad Toy Store, so check the link below for that. All right, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's the Batman out of the packaging. A very cool figure. I'm very happy with this piece. Very poseable. I love the articulation. There are some parts I think could have been done a little a little bit differently, but for the most part, I really like this figure. It's very fun to pose. Now, he does not come with a flight stand. That's a Mafex stand right over there, but he does come with a lot of accessories. We get two sets of interchangeable hands. You can see he has the fisted hand, and then you have the battering holding hand right over there, and you get two batterings, which look really good. I like the glossy paint that they used on these. Same thing with the glossy paint that they used for these hands, which I'll go over more in a bit. You also get this cool grapple gun over here, too, which I really like. So you just pull this string right over over here, then you can just adjust it any way you want, so I think that's pretty awesome. And they're pretty generous with this string, it measures to be about 11 inches long. I've mentioned the fragility of DC Collectibles figures in the past, but they have really tackled that problem. There's no issue with anything feeling like it's about to break on these. I have not broken anything on this, and these hands swap out very easily. Now, I really do like the head sculpt on this figure. I really like the added wrinkles right here above the eyebrows. We got some nice paint right over there, too. The eyes look very clean. I like the flesh tone a lot. The paint for the mouth looks really good. It does get a little fuzzy right over here. Not so fuzzy on that side, though. And coming around this side, the ears look really good. It has the short bat ears, so pretty nice. And I really like this cape. It's made out of soft, pliable material, so it doesn't hinder any articulation. I like the wrinkles in the cape and everything. looks really good, so I'm liking that. And looking at the torso on this guy, it does look a bit thin. I don't know. I feel like Batman should be a little bit bulkier than this. It's not too bad or anything, but I don't know. Not like Dark Knight Returns huge, but, you know, just a little bit bigger than this. But anyway, the muscle definition looks really good on the figure. There's no shadowing effect or anything like that, but there is variation of paints on here. Like, you get this matted look right over here. Nice deco for that bat logo. I really like that. Uh, and then you get this glossy look right over here on the gloves and on the boots. One thing is that the spikes seem to be on the side of the arms. I feel like they're supposed to be at the bottom over here. I guess it's not a big deal, but you know, it still looks pretty good. And the boots look really nice and shiny. Get some nice wrinkles over here. And I do get a little bit of scuffage from moving the legs up a lot, but the utility belt looks fantastic. You get some very nice color variation with the yellows. Some nice gold painted over here. He does have a bit lanky legs. I mean, overall, I feel like it's a little bit on the lanky side for a Batman figure, but not bad. And you do have these peg holes at the bottom of the feet, and then here's looking at the back of the figure, so he has some nice back muscle, and there's the bat butt and the bat legs. So for the most part, I like the articulation on this figure, but I do have my gripes with it, especially the head joint over here. I feel like it's tricky getting him to look up, and superhero figures should be able to look up, I think, relatively easy, but he does look up that much. You can't get him to look down pretty far. Unfortunately, I did get a little bit of a scuff right there. Anyway, you can move the head side to side, and you do get neck pivot. You also get ball jointed shoulders that move out that much that so you can rotate them forward. You get a bicep swivel. You also get double jointed elbows that bend in just a little bit more than 90 degrees. You get a wrist swivel and all the wrists hinge up and down, even the grapple hook one. Uh, you also get a diaphragm joint over here. It rotates side to side just a little bit. You don't want to move it more than that. He also crunches at that diaphragm joint and he can crunch back at the diaphragm. You also get some diaphragm pivot. He also has a waist crunch over here, which is pretty cool. You can move that forward that much with both joints all together, and they both move back that much. Wow, that's pretty far. You also get hip joints that allow him to do the splits. He can kick forward pretty far. He has no upper thigh cut over here. Pixel Dan and I were talking to Jim and Kevin about that, and they're saying, oh, I think it'll work out without it. And I can see what they're talking about, because as soon as you get it to move forward like that, you can rotate the upper thigh a little bit like that. However, I still wish we did have that thigh cut, because uh, it just makes it a little bit easier for posing, because you can't really rotate it around when the legs are down. 
down. Anyway, he has double jointed knees right here. He does have boot rotation and the ankles move down, they move up and he has that beautiful ankle pivot. Now this figure has been advertised to be in the six inch scale and Batman standing just a little over six inches tall. And then to compare this icon's Batman figure to some other six inch scale Batmans, we have the DCUC Batman, we have the animated series from DC Collectibles, the Mezco 112 scale Dark Knight Returns, then the Dark Knight Mafex Batman. This guy is definitely the shortest one out of these five. He is technically a six inch scale figure, but much smaller than what we usually expect for 112 scale. And then to compare this Batman figure to your average size Marvel Legend, here he is next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Hey there, little Batman, I got a brand new theme song. Check it out, it goes like this. <clears throat> So complaints aside, I really do like this figure a lot, and the complaints that I have about the figure don't really hinder anything that I really want to do with it. You know, I was able to get that leg to twist, and you could half the head joint on there, even though it will pop off on you. So I'm still able to get the poses that I want to with this figure, which you'll see in the slideshow. Anyway, I hope you guys liked my review. If you did, please hit the like button, click any of the boxes right over here. If you want more shart in your face, if you're the age of 18 or older, please support the channel and check out the Patreon account. If you're any age, check out my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Instagram and go to toynewseye.com for a photo gallery of images from this review. I'll catch you guys later. Peace! That's crispy. More than that, so and that oop, there goes his head.